Hey James, what are you working on? Hey, I'm just working on a new site for a client. Oh, and what are you using to build the site? Oh, it's a no-code tool. It's really, really cool. A no-code tool? Oh, you must not be a real developer then. Not a real developer? Let me stop you right there. There are lots of reasons that developers would use no-code tools. Let's talk about five of them. What's up, everyone? My name is James Quick, and I do weekly videos about web development related topics. And let me start by saying I am a developer, but I readily recognize the need and usefulness of no code and low code tools. And I think for anybody that's watching, we should get rid of this idea that people who use no code, low code tools are not developers. Sometimes it's just the best tool for the job. And I'll tell you five different reasons why you would want to consider or would benefit from using low code, no code tools. So first off, what actually is low code, no code tools? Well, these are tools that allow you, developer or otherwise, to build applications, websites, mobile apps, anything really that you can imagine, to build those without having to write all the code yourself. Now in a no code tool, you would write no code. Hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. In a low code tool, and a lot of these tools fall into this category, in a low code tool, you can do almost everything that you would want to without having to write any code, but then they give you a bit of customization where you can write custom code if you want to. So as a developer, it's actually really handy to work in that environment because you can use all the graphical interfaces and drag and drop stuff and click connects and that kind of stuff to do most of it and then go in and add the custom stuff that other people who are not developers who don't have experience writing code would not be able to do. So what's an example of this? Well, a few weeks ago, I did a video on BuddyBase, which is a no-code, low-code tool for building an internal application. And it only took about 10 minutes. And I was able to save records to a database, have form and form validation, have Discord integrations and a leaderboard showing kudos that people have received. All these things I was able to build in about 10 minutes using BuddyBase. You can check out that full video if you're interested for a hands-on demo of how to use a no-code, low-code tool. But regardless, there are more and more tools available to help you do this sort of thing. Now, I am really into kind of these automated tools that help connect different things. Uh, so example of this is Zapier, uh, IFTTT, if this, then that is another example. These are a couple of ones that are, you're able to connect incoming things with outcoming things. So if somebody tweets about a certain thing, you can save that into a Google Sheet. If somebody subscribes to your newsletter, you can send yourself an email notification or a notification in Discord or whatever it is. I think these are really kind of cool. So connecting your apps and workflows, IFTTT does something similar. Airtable is a really cool one because it's kind of a GUI database thing that gives you some automations and you can write code inside of this as well. So it gives you full customization over whatever you want it to do. Now, some of the more traditional things that people think about uh, one would be WordPress. WordPress is a uh, low code tool. You can actually write all the code behind WordPress if you want to, but most people use it as uh, a no code tool where you can use all these plugins and things to build your site. Wix is another super popular one, a uh, free website builder. And these have gotten more and more powerful so that you can do more and more without having to write code. So all that said, as a quick introduction here, let's go ahead and jump into the five reasons why you should consider and when you should consider using a no code, low code tool. So the first is speed. Now in that buddy base video that I did a few weeks ago, I reference in the intro, it's like the person is like, Hey James, can you build this site? And then we both guess at how long it's going to take. And I say two months and they say two weeks or two hours or something. And they're like, no, seriously, two hours, which is a ridiculous timeline. And that's exaggerated. But with no code, low code tools, you can get started building websites and applications quicker than you would writing code. Now, a lot of us that have been writing code for a while, we probably have temp templates and things that we've built up in the past and we can reuse and that helps speed up the process also. But using no code tools, they have so much stuff built in that you can get started even quicker with those tools. Now, my podcast co-host Amy Dutton has often referenced Webflow as her uh, no code tool of choice. It's called a visual way to build the web. And she has gone and done landing pages and things in Webflow instead of building them out in code, but just because it's quicker and easier to get that landing page up. She may replace that with code later on, but the speed to market to get that landing page out is quicker than if she were to write the code herself. And she writes pretty good code. So if you ever feel like you're under a timeline and you need some assistance, this is a great reason to go to low code, no code tool. It gets repetitive to say, but to use those types of tools just because it's gonna be able to speed up that process. 
And if there's one thing I've ever learned as a developer, it's that everything takes longer than you would expect. Everything. So the more tools you can have to help yourself out in terms of speed, the better off you'll be. An example of this, if you're building a regular application, uh, something I've talked about on Twitter recently is if you're building some sort of form, connecting a form is relatively easy, easy, but then you think about loading states and error messages and validation messages. There's so many small things that go into something as simple as a form that if something else can take care of a lot of that stuff for you, it can definitely speed up your development process. Now, the second thing is avoiding writing boilerplate code. Let me know, raise your hand, or let me know in the comments below if you've been here before. You decided to create a new application and you need to create API routes to handle a form, for example. So you create the form, you create the API handler on the back end, you send the information from the form to the endpoint, you create the function that's gonna take that data, save it to the database, you send a response back to the front end, the front end then redirects to a new page or shows some sort of indicator that that information was saved. There's really nothing unique about that. And it's one of the things that we see on almost every website is a form and you have to build out all of that functionality. That's basically the same every time, which means you end up writing a lot of boilerplate. So going back to the idea of speeding up your development process by not having to write the boilerplate code for all of these different things that you have to do that just gets super repetitive, not only will it help speed you up, but it will also kind of make your code a little bit safer because it's been tested through these platforms, especially obviously if you find a platform that you trust, but that stuff has been written and tested and used by lots of people. So you can just run with it and not have to write all that boilerplate code yourself. Now, the next thing up is integrations. This is point number three. If you want to integrate, I mentioned as an example in that buddy base video, if you want to integrate with Discord and email and a database and Slack and all these different platforms that you could integrate with, that means you have to have, if you're writing this code, the responsibility of looking into that platform, understanding their API, downloading different NPM packages, getting API keys. You have to get that regardless, but you have to register the application. Then you have to understand how the actual API works itself. And so what I end up doing is I make test requests, see what data I get back, see if that data matches what I expect, and then iterate from there. And that just takes time. So you think about all these potential integrations with different platforms that you might want to do. Each one takes time and testing and exploration until you actually get it right. But with a lot of these no-code platforms, all those integrations or a lot of those integrations have already, again, been written and tested so that you, all you have to do is go and get your API key, for example. So the demo I did with BuddyBase and integrating with Discord, all I did was register a bot in the developer Discord portal add those credentials into BuddyBase and had a few clicks to get that connected to send notifications to Discord, which I think is pretty cool. Now that's much faster than me having to actually write that code myself. And I've actually worked with Discord and built bots before, I've got a video on that. But it's easier to use a no code, low code platform that already has that stuff taken care of for me and I can just tap into it. So especially if you're looking at integrating with a bunch of or a several different services, it can be easier to leverage those inside of a tool that already takes care of it for you. All right, number four here is the ability to involve non-coders in the process of building this site. Now, again, I wanna get away from this idea of people who use no-code, low-code tools are not developers. That's not what I'm saying here. I mean, people who have not written code before, people who don't have the experience writing code, and that's totally fine, but this means with a no-code, low-code platform, you can get other people involved. You can get your marketing people involved you can, get, you can get admins involved. You can get other people than just developers involved in building the site. Now, is there an onboarding process to all these tools to figure out how they work? Sure, yes, there is. But it's much easier to get someone started that's never written code before to use a no-code, low-code tool than it is for them to then have to learn how to program and learn everything that gets associated with that. So if you're looking at building a startup and you don't have programming experience yourself, this is your way to be quicker to build your landing page, your MVP, et cetera. And it's also cheaper because you don't have to hire a developer to do that for you. You have the ability to take complete ownership of it, build it yourself, and then have other people involved. Now, the same thing goes for me as a developer. I can be a developer. I can have really good skills. I can know how to write all the code myself. But we talked about a few benefits, why I would use it in the first place. And then I can have other people join who don't have programming experience to be able to contribute to the site too. So you have the ability to have more people involved, save time on development, but by not having to hire developers, that which then leads to quicker speed to market 
and then having a product out there if that's what you're building that people can use and try out. Now, that's not to say that you can't then replace that with code later on. You absolutely can. But no code, low code early on is a great way to get started and get that thing out there for people to see. And the last point here is number five, which is that these tools have gotten better and better over time. Now, if you think back 10 years ago, a low code, no code tool would probably just give you a few visual things to drag and drop buttons and things like that. But now these tools have gotten so much better. They had these integrations with different platforms like Discord and Slack and email and that sort of stuff that we've already talked about. They have the ability to interact with databases. BuddyBase that I used in that video that I mentioned before has its own database. It can connect to your databases like MySQL or PlanetScale or Postgres or any other kind of database that you can think of. So these things have just gotten better and better and more powerful over the years to enable people, developers or not developers or programming people with programming experience and people without programming experience to build more and more capable applications. And I think the trend here is that these are going to continue to get more and more powerful and they're gonna to continue to get more and more popular as tools to build applications. Now, kind of looking towards the future, does this mean it's gonna replace developer jobs? No, I don't think so. One, these platforms also have developers behind them and then also developers want full control over their application. So at some point you might hit limitations with no code, low code platforms, which means you as the developer can then take that and build all the custom things that you want to. So there will obviously still be a great need for developers and it all depends on the use case. But those are five different reasons why you should consider using a no code, low code tool. Let me know what you think. If you have any experience with one of those types of platforms, let me know what you thought in the comments below. What are your favorites? In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you give them a shot and I'll see you later.